Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls. And in this video, I'm going to be going over some of the energies that are currently happening in the world. What might be behind that? What's the energy behind that? And what we need to be prepared for. It's not what you think. So to begin, as of the recording of this video, we have hurricanes, we have war, we have um, people fighting for their rights, their basic human rights. We have people dying for standing up for their basic human rights. We have people being abused. We have an immense problem with children um, being traumatized or worse. And we are at a place now where if we are going to do our part, especially if you're a spiritual person, but you know, just as a human being, we need to start doing this other part of the work that many have perhaps rejected. And that is working on our energy and working on our energetic field. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you should ignore the physical things that are going on in the world, absolutely not. But it is harming the collective when we won't take accountability for our actions, when we won't admit, okay, you know what? I said that because I did want to take a dig at you. And then you play dumb afterwards. You shoot out this negative energy and then you try to pretend like you're innocent. Or you know what? I do get self-centered and sometimes I just don't want to know what other people are going through. You know what? I do get selfish when it comes to my work and maybe I do get lazy or maybe I do think that the boss should give me undue praise or, you know, that, well, that's the other thing too, that we're seeing a lot of people, this isn't such a bad thing, but people are starting to stand up to employers and uh, demand better working environments and things like that. I'm talking about the people who um, they've coasted along in their life before and they've had things handed to them. So they expect that to continue. So we have all these surface level things going on. Um, we have our surface level reactions to them. Uh, another thing that I think we're going to be breaking away from, and I'm already seeing this, this idea that you have to hurry up and get married. Now, if you're married, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, but that's not, it's not the right thing for everybody. Or having kids is not the right thing for everybody. And... That gets into a long draw. We could do a whole video on that unto itself. But we're seeing where people are challenging some of the conditioning, the grooming, the brainwashing, and getting punished for it in one way or another. So if you're somebody who says, you know what, I'm tired of working um, or having the responsibility of three jobs but getting one salary, your boss may say, well, fine, I'll find somebody else. Or if you realize, you know what, I got married I kind of, it's just not working and you want to get out of it. Now you're facing a divorce. I skipped my first marriage. Okay. So, <laughs> so I don't know what a divorce is like, but I hear it's not very nice. It's not very pleasant. It's not very fun. Or if you were somebody sitting there, you know, really putting pressure on yourself to have kids, ask yourself where that's coming from. Is it because you really want to have children or is it because you feel pressured to have children? We are undoing quite a few evils. As I was saying in another video, we have this force that is pressing down on us, that has diminished us to empty us, to sort of empty us of our soul light and of our wisdom so that we could be filled with, uh, I don't know, some other energy that disempowers us. And so we are controllable. And when we start to wake up and we start to figure it out, oh, there's a catastrophe. There's a common enemy. We had better come together. There is much more to come. And I'm saying this from like a channeled message standpoint, uh, picking up on the energy. There are things that will be happening that we have no context for we've never seen before, at least in our lifetime, we've never seen it. 
So in order to be able to show up in our fullest capacity and to be able to help <laughs> in the way that we can, as I was saying, in this sort of spiritual warfare, we need to make sure that our frequency is in a high place, that when we process things, we don't process by rejecting others who are having emotions, because now, now you're right back low again. You're back low again when you don't care, when you have no empathy, okay? You're low. So we're not trying to raise our frequency by ignoring other people or ignoring things that are going on in the world. But by facing ourselves and asking that deep question, why do I have such a problem with this? Why am I triggered by that? I'll, I'll be the first one. I'll go first. If you don't know me, I've been through a big lifetime of various types of abuse. I uh, was very much the scapegoat growing up. And, um, you know, groups of friends, everything was my fault at work when I was an adult. Everything was my fault. Even if I wasn't there, somehow it was my fault. And so I learned to be hyper vigilant to people please. And it wasn't because I wanted everybody to be happy. I'll be very, I mean, I wanted people to be happy, but it was survival. Because if I don't, something awful is going to happen to me. And if I uh, talk about this, then I'm being a victim. If I don't talk about it, I go out of my mind and I get into a dark place. So I had to, when I got onto social media, which can be a cruel, cruel place. Obviously, this is where a lot of those dark energies really start working through people. The trolls, the judgmental people who want to come out and just do anything to tear you down. And then they play the victim if you stand up to them. You see what I'm saying? Um, but for me on social media, it was a big part of my soul's path to not be afraid to call things out to not be afraid to say what I've got to say, to be unapologetic when I demand respect. Even if a bunch of other people are going to put all kinds of labels on that. Obviously I'm a woman, so I'll be called a bee because I came back at someone. Or the big thing was you can't possibly be spiritual because, and, and call me a fraud, because you are not my expectation of what a female spiritual practitioner should be. You should be soft-spoken. You should not let anything bother you ever. You should be able to handle anything. You should have all the answers. During the thing that happened two years ago, <laughs> that went on for two years, um, that I'm not even sure. I'm so used to talking around it. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to say it because we were getting shut down for saying it on this platform. Um, during that time, I was dealing with my own isolation uh, and on social media, having people from high school telling me, I know you mean well, but you know, some of us have to be around people. And I had left a comment saying, you know, I'm getting kind of tired of people saying I'm missing being around people. When some of us, we didn't have a choice. We had to do everything on our own anyway. And, and we're not doing well either. We need to be checked on. And someone else came out and was, again, probably a narcissist, but saying how much her pain means more than anybody else's. Very clear, very diminishing to me. And when I went back and I looked at that comment, I'm like, oh my God, that was a cry for help. But what will the dark energies that are working through people, what will that look like? Oh, you're not strong. Honey, I'm here. Tell me I'm not strong. <sighs> Come on. We don't talk about things. We don't <sighs> offer up any sort of perspective, fresh perspective. And then what happens? Protests. Violence. People scrambling for their lives. We're in a time now where we have to examine, as I was giving the example about how I had to look at where I needed to be healed and some realizations that came out of that and realizing that I'm not always going to be able to be strong. And why do I feel the need to? Because other people have that expectation of me. And it's not popular to be real. 
it will one day. And then someone else will act like they invented it when people for many years ahead of them have been already doing it. <laughs> right? But, and they got their cue from that, but they won't, you know, acknowledge that. But this is that time to look at, okay, where do I need to heal? Doesn't mean you have to be perfect, but you do have to stop this. I'm fine. No, I don't need any help. I have great self-esteem. I hear that from people. Actually, I heard this from somebody who was not taking care of themselves and saying that they were fine. And I'm like, you literally came in here with all these things showing that you're not fine. Like, it's okay to say I'm hurting. It's okay to say I'm scared. We need the honesty. Because all that stuff that we've been trained to do before has got us here. And here is not a place that is stable, let's say. So how do you do this? Meditate. When you're doing your spiritual practice, don't try to do it like, I'm just such a great human being, I'm gonna excel above everybody because you're gonna have the biggest slap in the face you've ever imagined. Be aware of the energy that you are putting out into the universe. And that also means if you think you're more important than anybody else, or it's just about me and what I want. Okay, let's talk about karma. Karma is a big word. It doesn't always necessarily mean bad karma. There could be good karma as well. But let's talk about what goes around comes around. Is that more comfortable for everybody? <laughs> um, just that portion of it. So if you are someone who is out there, you know, we all come into these human contracts, these soul contracts to be human, to come in and to learn things. And if you say, okay, I'm just going to change my life overnight. And then you wake up the next morning and you got what you wished for and you lose your job. You find out your husband's cheating on you. You find out maybe that's a hard thing to face too. I was working so hard for my husband's approval and then he went off and did this emotionally abusive thing, this betrayal anyway. Now that means I have to work even harder to make sure I get revenge on him so I'm super hot and then I get somebody else and I get, I'm just working to get someone else's approval. Um, your kids decide they hate you or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all these things come crumbling down all at once. Or... You could take it little by little. You could be working on yourself, paying attention, because when you raise your frequency and you work on your energy field, yes, through meditation, I have a whole meditation list, just it's all right there. Pick whichever one works for you and listen to it often, okay? Again, watch your intention with it. Be with the intention of I want to heal. Yes, you need to heal. I don't care who you think you are. As a matter of fact, the more you say, I don't have anything to heal, you probably are the one that needs the most healing because you're in such denial or you're crazy. I don't know. <laughs> have you heard about this thing being, being human? Okay, there's, there's some stuff going on here. Okay, we need to heal from that. So, you know, go in with the intention of, I want to be the best human being I can possibly be. I want to show up and be a benefit to this world. And don't just say it in your mind. I want to take my gifts and share them with the world. Why? So that you get attention? So that you're validated? That's the number one reason why anybody... Shoot, I got books on a computer somewhere. <laughs> you think I don't want validation for those? Sure. But where does that come from? It comes from this brainwashing that you have to be published or you're not a real writer. You have to make this kind of money or you didn't make it in the world. I could go on and on and on for hours about the things that we've been brainwashed to believe. You're supposed to own a house by a certain age. But where I live, a no-nothing little house is about half a million dollars. Go and get you one. Anyway, when you're doing your spiritual work, <laughs> make sure that you are not doing it with ego. And there's going to be something extraordinary that happens for you. Take it easy so you don't get all your karma 
all at once or everything come crashing in all at once. But take it little by little because if you do little by little, then you know, you might have a discovery of, I think it's time for me to move on from my job. You know, maybe it's time that my husband and I kind of reevaluate where we are in this marriage or my boyfriend or, you know, maybe finally coming to terms with, okay, I'm single and it's great. It's fine. <laughs> right? Whatever that is, take that process very slowly. Now, when you raise your frequency, you're going to be more open. And if you ask your guides and angels to come in of what I like to say is of God's purest love and light, um, some people get real like weird about the word God, cool on you, like whatever, I don't care. Just don't be a bad person. Don't be a crap person. Okay. I don't care who you're talking to, <laughs> but just go and do the work, but you're going to be more open to those messages coming in. What we don't want to be doing then is acting like a know-it-all. There is still such a damaged collective ego. In my line of work, I see it all the time. I've done all my ascension work. Really? Because you still have a body. Shouldn't you be floating around a ghost or something? Actually, ghosts aren't very ascended. But shouldn't you be in non-physical? Wouldn't you be in your rainbow body? Wouldn't that be happening? It's not? Okay, you woke up like everybody else? Brush your teeth like everybody else? Okay, let's bring it down a notch, guru, okay? <laughs> so that is the problem. And that is what, this is what has gotten us so hung up in being able to move forward collectively. And if you are someone who's been doing the work, doing the work, doing the work, and you find yourself getting very human and looking at someone who's not even trying and you sense like, they're not even doing the work. Maybe you don't articulate it that way in your mind, but you somewhere in your like, you're not pulling your weight. Now you're just annoyed with them. You see that with people in my life. <laughs> like I would start getting snippy with them and just like, oh, like, oh, it must be nice to just sit around and do nothing. You know, why don't you, <laughs> why don't you step up and help? And I also would start to get pretty upset with enablers who were, you know, they're sensitive people, but... They don't want to make waves. They don't want to make waves. So, all right, so you just sit back while this person abuses other people because you don't want to make waves. And there are some pretty drastic examples of that. And then there's the other side of it where people overcorrect and they're too focused on controlling other people or um, reading into everything and, and all that. So there needs to be balance and harmony. There needs to be this deep soul level work occurring. And if you say, why, Michelle, what, what, do, what do you think is going to happen? It's already happening. You already see it. These are things that will just get worse. There was supposed to be something that happened yesterday. And it didn't happen. And I remember feeling this push-pull, like when I heard a date. Now, if you're, if you know what exactly what was supposed to be happening in detail, well, then you're one of the people causing it. <laughs> like, ew. Uh, so I didn't know exactly what it was, but I just felt that something was in the works and it didn't feel good. You know, something was going to be pushed. And it was about egos and about winning. It was about power and, you know, all this stuff. And then I felt this other calming feeling coming over me of like, and if I had to articulate it, it would be, they're not going to let that happen. They, meaning our guardians, whatever you see those as. And one of the detrimental things would be people who have no expanded consciousness whatsoever. The ones that say there's nothing beyond here. That's part of the battle. That's part of what drags us back. I'm about facts. I'm about science. I'm about ma 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 ma. Well, guess what? A lot of those things that spiritual practitioners have been doing for many, 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 many years probably have a scientific explanation to them. You know, it's it's not magic. It's a technology. It's just not everybody has figured out what that is. We need to do better and uh, it's time.
So what side do you want to be on? It really is that. Don't forget, we are in a duality consciousness. Yes, beyond here, we are one. Of course we are. But right now, this is what is at hand. And it really is the last call for people who have been um, manipulative, Machiavellian, whatever. If you are somebody who has disrespected other people, you have treated other people like objects, you have especially something with uh, sexual energy, that's incredibly sacred. So if you have abused that in any way, it's coming back for you. It's going to be coming back for you. So that's the other thing I want to mention here before I close out. You can't be doing spiritual practice to save your behind. It's not that. You have to be doing it because you genuinely want to be a good person in this world. And you genuinely care about others. And you really want to be at your highest potential here. If it's anything less than that, do not whine and cry when you're paying the consequences for it. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.